Today, I want to talk about the eventual finale for Season 2 of Hell of a Boss, which is titled Sin's Miss. This episode is a bit far off still, not scheduled to come out until three more episodes have dropped before December, but with it being the Season 2 finale, it's probably going to be pretty climactic. Now, originally, I had theorized that Sin's Miss would be the Helliverse version of Christmas, with a focus on the IMP gang on the run from Krampus. According to Vivzy Pop in early livestream interviews, Hell's version of Christmas focuses more so on Krampus, the demonic friend of Santa Claus, who comes along to punish bad children while Santa rewards the good ones in German tradition. However, fans have been pointing out with the reveal of what looks like Satan in the recent trailer, and the appearance of Mammon, that this episode may be more of a reunion of the seven sins that rule the seven rings of hell, as opposed to a smaller holiday episode built around a demonic Santa Claus. Now, finales are supposed to be pretty epic in general, with Season 1's original finale introducing us to Osmodius, with the later devised Episode 8 introducing us to Beelzebub. Mammon was introduced in the mid-season special for Season 2, which is a lot longer than Season 1 with its 12 episodes. This made Season 2 long enough that the mid-season special serves more as a mid-season finale, with the promise of more demonic sin appearances in the real finale. So far in the trailer, we see what looks like Satan, as well as a new shot of Mammon, but there's reason to think we'll be seeing more than just these two. Vivzy Pop released a tweet earlier this year saying that she was finalizing the designs of Satan and Leviathan for an upcoming episode, which only leaves Belphegor in terms of deadly sins that we have not seen. Belphegor's design may have already been finalized for this and simply not included in the tweet because of that, but she may also just be absent from this episode. For me, the idea of revealing two or three sins all at once seems like a bit much at first, and I imagine what we will more so get here is the less important sins being mysterious, perhaps even silhouetted figures in the background, with their final forms being needed in order to achieve this, with a more explicit reveal for each of them coming later. However, even with the more planned seasons, the show may not have time to really explore all seven sins properly, and I could also see them all just being revealed here to at least get them included if they aren't going to have dedicated episodes in the seasons to come. A benefit to this, beyond it just being a bunch of cool new demonic royals with lore to unravel all at once, is that we will get to understand the Seven Sins more so as a hierarchy, as opposed to each of them as individual characters. The important players to the story are Osmodius and Mammon, who have already been thoroughly explored on their own, with Beelzebub being more so a bonus character designed around Kesha. From here, each prince's individual relationship with their ring becomes less important, and something that can be explored in the backgrounds of those rings themselves, instead of with actual screen time with the Sin. What becomes more important is how Mammon and Osmodius fit into the grander hierarchy, and how that can be used against characters like Osmodius. Mammon was pretty upset when Fizz stood his ground about Mammon's toxic and predatory behavior. Mammon tried to get instant revenge with violence and the exposing of Osmodius and Fizz's relationship. With Osmodius there, violence was a no-go, and with the fans shipping Fizzmodius because it's cute, Mammon made it clear that he would find some other way to get revenge on the two of them and I have to imagine that is why Mammon appears again in this trailer, as well as Satan. Now, both Mammon and Satan appear to be in the same location here, a very specifically red and royal-looking location. This isn't too different from Stolas's home, which can look rather red in the evenings in particular. This seems to be the same place where Visago and the Goetia can be seen, and therefore this other shot of Visago and Andrealfis standing over a pit seems to be the same location as well. Other shots seem to show a royal location that Andrealfis is at as well, with a lot of his icy influence. However, this does not appear to be the same castle or mansion, and instead maybe Stolas's mansion with some icing over from Andrealfis. You'll notice that in the shot Mammon is in, it has some apple imagery in the background, and in the shot of the Goetia, together, we see more apples and even a serpent. The apple and serpent, of course, allude to Lucifer, who is a key character in the sister show, Hasbin Hotel. Due to the rights of Hasbin Hotel, it's expected that major characters like Lucifer won't be able to appear in Hell of a Boss explicitly. However, that doesn't mean that the show couldn't do an episode where all the royals go to Lucifer's palace and he is mentioned and supposed to be there somewhere in important meetings, but never actually seen on screen. The name Sins Miss implies that it's some sort of reunion of the Sins, but as discussed already, the Goetia seem to be at the same palace, with Visago even wanting to summon Stolas there when he doesn't show up himself. 
This is likely an annual event hosted by Lucifer where the Sins are able to talk out any conflicts that exist among them, and perhaps have certain larger legal courts such as the Goetia weigh in on issues. This would be something of a meeting of presidents of each ring essentially, as well as noble classes from throughout Hell, where the attempt to create harmony leads to a lot of social mind games. This is something I expect both Andrealfis and Mammon to take advantage of in the same episode, both looking to get someone else in trouble with their peers, and the two ultimately being connected. Mammon had promised revenge on Osmodius, and doing so in the courts of Hell is something he may have experienced with already. Back in episode 2 of season 1, the gang went to Mammon's theme park in the Greed Ring, Lululand. From posters all around the park and through Octavia's commentary, we find out that Lululand is a ripoff of a theme park made by Lucifer in the Pride Ring called Lulu World. Despite being a blatant ripoff, Mammon has the paperwork proving that Lucifer has taken him to court in Hell and lost, with Mammon being able to continue his legally distinct Lululand. I've seen some fans speculate that this is some sort of royal courthouse, not one for typical trials with lower level demons, but for royals to hash out their differences politically under the pretense that having other royals vote together can lead to some sort of fair outcome. Thus, Lucifer, even as the King of Hell, can still lose to another sin like Mammon if the others, perhaps even the Goetia, just vote in Mammon's favor. This kind of system is essentially exploited by outside voters actually having not enough bias as opposed to having too much bias. In trying not to be biased towards someone like their king Lucifer, you end up voting on who has the best argument, and that isn't always the person who is actually correct. Lucifer is not the best at speaking for himself, I would say, not that he can't spit rhymes when he gets musical, but he is someone who is ultimately rather soft compared to a figure like Mammon, and has trouble expressing himself to people in his family. It's easy to see how Mammon could essentially play dumb to any accusations of theft, and instead present very clear clinical and logical arguments about the exact differences of Lululand to Lulu World, while simply ignoring the similarities. This same sort of approach could be used against Osmodius as revenge against him and Fizzerali. Mammon would need to talk a big deal about Osmodius' failings as a ruler as opposed to their personal issues, but could lawyeristically showcase that Osmodius is abusing his power in favor of the lower classes of demons. This would tie into Stolas who used Osmodius to achieve this, getting the Osmodian crystal for Blitz. These are supposed to be used for succubus to travel to Earth for seducing humans, with cases like Barbie Wire being black market operations from what we understand, not legally under Osmodius' jurisdiction. The adding of Blitz to this network as a favor to Stolas would showcase an abuse of power and not the kind that Hell actually likes. This would be helping the lower classes and crossing boundaries into other royals' territories, particularly that of Satan's. As discussed in my previous video about the Asmodian Crystal, this sort of mission seems like something Satan would be in charge of, and it looks like he gets rather angry in the trailer. It's not that Satan would be mad that he isn't the one controlling Blitz's business, but that he doesn't allow for this sort of business to exist from the people in his ring. Blitz may have been a pride imp his whole life who never really visited Wrath outside of horseback riding lessons, but Wrath seems to be where imps hail from in general, and Satan seems to be the one essentially that they exist under. Satan doesn't allow his residents access to the human world probably for a variety of actually really good reasons, but all of them essentially being that it's not in his his best interest with his plans for how he operates on Earth. Blitz's operation is not like the succubus, who get to play anonymous hot humans for a day, and then disappear back to their life in hell, having spread vice without disrupting the balance on Earth. But Blitz and his gang are sent up to murder humans on behalf of other sinners, which naturally attracts the attention of governments and news organizations, even before they realize that demons are behind it all. All of this could make organizations like Dorks hone in on Satan's actual plans and the way his own imps do in fact operate on the missions that he sends them on, risking the system that Hell has been setting up on Earth for thousands of years now. And Realfis, of course, would also enjoy this as it gives him something to attack Stolas and Blitz over. Stolas' scandal could be played as infecting all the way up to Osmodius as a king of the Goetia and the deadly sin of lust himself. And all of this has to culminate, I imagine, in some sort of battle on Stolas's front yard. While the scene could be from another episode, Visago saying they should summon Stolas makes me think that Andrealfis ends up at Stolas' castle to figure out why Stolas is avoiding his duties at the court, only to find him with the MP cheated on Stella with. 
This could lead to a cool battle, but with this just being a trailer and the finale so many episodes away, there could be so much more to the story that we aren't given yet that will have made these moments impossible to have guessed this early. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Well, 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 if it isn't my arch rival, Racer Rabbit, Shady the Bat, you're here for the magic crystal as well? Careful, Racer! He almost beat you last time! I guess we'll have no choice but to battle till the very end, our hands all over each other. No homo. Hmm, there is no homo that I fear. Well then, may the best homo win! Wait, what did you say?